Also in the description you can pay a, a few little pounds or so to get the printable description with the outline etc etc from my Etsy shop that's in the description of the video there so you can get that at your leisure all right so I'm going to get going now with this fish let's just get my the chat on so that I can see you loud and clear let's get this big so I can uh, so I can read what you are all saying bear with me right the the, the paper I've got is a hundred percent cotton rag paper it's hot pressed can you hear that now everybody um when you uh if you buy the sort of pack right you'll get all those uh, these things you'll get the outline you'll get um text and photographs showing you each step of the way so you you won't get lost okay right let me show you my palette this is my palette here it's a frank web palette and i got all my colors in here that i need okay so i'm going to keep both things uh on screen so you can see what i'm aiming for and then you can see me as i'm working it as well so first of all we're going to work on the actual koi fish itself so i'm going to be using clear clear water and about a size 10 round watercolor brush now and I'm going to wet the whole inside of the fish because so I'm going to work on this gorgeous fish first of all okay can you still hear me all right Jim so I'm wetting the inside of the fish now Right, can you... I sound, I sound a little bit better. Can you hear me all right? So I'm gonna moisten the whole of the fish with clear water. And I'm doing this so that when I drop the washes on, they'll be soft. Okay. Can anybody tell me if they can hear me now? Or if the sound has gone? Right, okay. So I'm moistening all inside the fish now. Right, what's happening now? I'm not sure if everyone can hear me now again. Right, let's have a look here. This is uh, Yeti. Yeti is doing okay. Yeti properties okay. The 
you chap yeah so the yeti's working okay i see all right well that's good uh okay so the utap properties utap individual crossbar what okay Okay, right, Chris, thanks for that. I'll keep on going. Right, I'm going to re-wet the fish a little bit now because I want a bit more moisture. I want the um, the grey shadow and the actual red patches to be able to, f um, you know, blend quite nicely. So this is why when you're using 100% cotton rag paper, you actually have more paint in time because the paper will hold a lot of moisture okay so I'm re-wetting this takes a bit of time but it gives me more work in time then I'm going to wet the fins as well so that if I have any bleed it will just look nice and natural coming out into the out into the fins okay There we go. Right now, what I want to do immediately is get a nice shadow on the left hand side of the fish to make it look, you know, sort of ovoid. So that shape looks like it's sort of curving over like that. And to get a nice shadow colour, we can use two complements, two colour complements. We can use a cadmium scarlet. And believe it or not, we can use um, cerulean blue. So those two make a nice, uh, a nice grey. I'm, I'm pulling more of the cerulean blue into it, just to sort of. I'm trying to pitch it somewhere between the red uh, and the blue, and I've sort of got that grey there. Okay, so. What I'm going to do now is add that. Let's see, I'm going to add that grey quite strongly all on the left hand side and partly onto the fin as well, around the mouth, so that we get a nice strong shadow on the fish and I'll take some out into the tail and as you might be able to see already can you see the, the moisture in the paper there if I show you there there's the moisture in the paper that's what you need to get okay that's what you need to get good um, wet into wet watercolor all right so straight away now I'm going to rinse my brush and move to a like a size 8 or a half inch flat and I'm going to pick up some aureolin pick up a bit of cadmium red and I'm not making this too runny okay because I want it to be strong but I don't want it to be too wet So I'm going to paint this koi colour in and the, the paint will only go um, where I've wet the paper. And this is why I put quite a bit of water on the paper earlier on so that it will run uh, you know, quite nicely. Let's have a red, more of a red blotch here. I'm going to cut around that eye. 
Right, let's have some more red, say, um, in the base of his tail. That'll bleed quite nicely there. And let's have a little bit of stronger red now on top of that orangey colour I used. So that these reds and oranges will, will mix together. Now what I'd like to do is zoom out a little bit and I'm just going to introduce a bit of spray. Just to make it bleed a little bit more. See this run happening now? So a gentle, gentle bleed which will give us a nice watercolour look. I'm holding it at the vertical there and letting the paint letting the plate paint bleed down. I like to let the watercolour see all this lovely bleed happening here which I really like. Just let it have its head a little bit and whenever you want it to stop you know just lay it flat like that okay. So now if we if we've got some paint going where we don't really want it what we can do is just get a bit of dry tissue and lift out the white areas that we wanted to keep. I'm not going to go too much into the left hand side because I want that grey shadow there. I will pick up that bit of red there that's gone in the water and let's have a look. There's a little bit of a sharp bit of white I'd like to keep on his back there. So we want some really sharp whites in amongst all those gorgeous oranges and everything. Okay. So let's have a look now. Okay, if anybody can hear me that's watching, could you just type in yes, please, in the chat box? Because it's hard for me to know if you are seeing everything, if you are hearing everything at the moment. Okay, so now, thanks Jim, thanks for that, that's very kind. Okay, I know you can hear me now, so I'll carry on, all right? So into the fin, let's have a little bit of that grey again. Just drop it in and into this fin here, maybe leave a little bit of white at the side. Hi Debbie, nice to see you here. Nice for thanks for joining me. Okay. Right, I've got a size uh, five brush now, and I'm just gonna let's zoom in a little bit on the fish now. I'm going to soften that away. So we've just got some grey on the fin there. Now, as you can see. This show you now. There's still some moisture in the fish. Can you see it's still a little bit moist in places? So where it's moist, I'm gonna go back in with some much more bold red. Just finally, while we've still got a bit of moisture, and so it'll give us a little bit of a soft edge. Um, and it'll sit on top of those paler oranges and reds that we put in first of all because this is the dramatic scarlet that I love and that probably that you love about uh, this koi fish as well and putting a bit more strength in the base of the tail there so these will really pop you know when the fish is dry hi Debbie nice to see you thanks for joining us Right, <clears throat> so now I've got the fish done there for a little minute. I want to let that dry before I do some more work on it. So while I'm going to let that dry, let's do some work on the lily pads. So I'm going to wet the lily pads with clear water. I 
and then I'm going to make up a nice sort of uh, dulled green, a quiet green in order to start building the rest of the picture. By the way, if anybody wants to find out more about my courses, the link to my website is in the description. And if you'd like to buy the printable instant PDF lesson, it's five pages long for this tutorial. You can buy it, it's about two or three dollars and the link is in my description as well. Okay, so let's go for, we'll use some of this grey that we've already got on the palette. And into that, let's add a bit of, add a bit of green, just to sort of keep some harmony in the painting. So I'm going to drop this green into the moistened lily pad. And I, I purposely want it to be, uh, you know, quite organic looking. Okay, so while that one is soaking in, I'm going to wet this one down the base of the, at the bottom of the painting. Let me zoom in a bit on that for you. So just zoom in on that. Just moistening all of that lily pad to prepare it for the colour I want to drop in. Right, so again I'm going to pick up that puddle of paint which was a bit of the turquoise blue, a bit of the red and a little bit of green. I'm also going to add a little bit of raw sienna just to warm this lily pad up because it's it's nearer the front of the um of the painting so we want to sort of make it make it look warmer because it's nearer so i'm adding the warm color the raw sienna is a bit warmer in there i'm keeping an eye on that other lily pad because i don't want it to go too dry before i start to add a little bit more paint to it so this watercolour is all a juggling act, isn't it? It's, um, the timing before you drop in some more colours. It has to be the right time, otherwise you get back runs, etc. Now, I quite like the look of that lily pad. And um, there's still a bit of moisture in there. You can see that, can't you? So while it's in that moist state, let's go for um, some zoocyte green. Now, if you haven't got zoocyte green, don't worry, it's just a very dulled green, so you could make this green by using green with a bit of red in it. In fact, I'll add a bit more red now, some um, alizarin crimson, because red and green dull each other. So I just want a bit more um, darker green over there on the shadow side. And maybe cut around that slit in it there. And just do a few... Uh, patches and blotches and then you can see there's still moisture in there this is because I've got 100% cotton rag okay I'm just letting it run now I'm tipping the board there we are you can see that moisture still in there so I'm just letting this mottled leaf, uh, sorry, lily pad, letting the paint run around there for a little bit. Just turn my board the other way. And all the meanwhile, our fish is drying quite nicely. So that I'll be able to do a little bit more work to that in a few moments. The trick with watercolour is only ever paint on 100% dry paper 
or paper that's slightly moist. If you paint on paper that's damp, then you will probably cause back runs. Okay, so I quite like the sort of look of that little lily pad there now. Let's zoom back out now. So this is how we're looking at the moment. Now, the lily pad at the bottom, that's still got a bit of moisture in some places. So I'm going to get back in there before it dries too much and put a little bit of the darker green for some contrast on the lily pad. And especially in that bottom right hand corner, I want to make it darker there so that the eye is pushed back up into the painting. Now part of the uh, lily pads dried a little bit too much there on the corner so we got a hardish edge so I'll just have to blend it out and just do a little bit of patterning there. I'm going to pick up a bit more raw sienna into this wash because I want this wash to be warmer so I've got a sort of more of a yellowish hue in there and put that on as well. So I've got two washes going on and it gives a little bit of texture and colour. What you can do as well is come along with your squirty spray and just protect your fish and do a little squirt and that gives a sort of mottled effect. Can you see that if I zoom in? That lovely mottled effect there. Can anybody see that? Will you type yes if you can? And will you type yes just to know I can hear you? Hi Andrew, I just saw your message there. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Hope all's good with you and Muriel. So if anybody can uh, see me spraying that watercolour, watercolour, water spray on there, that'll be good to know. Uh, another thing you can do as well is you can take Get your knuckle, right, and um, press in, and make some little, you know, dimples and and texture and thing on there. See, so it gives a little bit more texture, and I might do it as well on my top one. That's still got up. You've got to do it while there's still a bit of moisture in there. Do a few of them together. You know, when you get this sort of mottled blobby blobby effect all right I'll zoom in and show you that it's quite a nice effect isn't it uh, right so i feel it's a bit less dead now i just did want a big green blob right so this is how we're looking at the moment now my fish is more or less dry but if i were to touch it with the soft part of my thumb base there it's still cool to the touch, so that, that means there's still moisture in there, right? So there's no way I want to paint on that. So rather than paint on it now, I'm just going to carry on working on some more of the um, stalks, the lily pad stalks. So what we'll do with those is we'll get a, a bigger pedal of Oreolin. Um, Hooker's green, a little bit of alizarin crimson just to sort of neutralise that green down a bit. A lot more water because I'm going to make these quite pale stalks. Okay. Right, let's see if anybody has seen um, and, re and replied to me. I just want to see. Okay, Jim, see you later then. Um, I hope you enjoy it when you finally catch up with it, okay? As I say, the outline is there for you to purchase if you want it. The link is in my description of the video. Right, let's crack on with some of these stalks now. These will have a little bit of a shadow side and they'll have a bit of a sunlit side. So let's just get some green on first of all so that we can then start changing the strength of light and dark in them. I'll, I'll work on two at any one time so that I've got time to sort of 
dark and enlighten them. If you if you have too many underway, they'll dry too quickly and you won't be able to add the shadows in a soft way and you won't be able to lift out the highlights. So I'm going to add the shadows with a much smaller brush. This is like about a size one. Okay, so I'm going to pick up some of this very pale green and now add some darker green into it and a little bit of the red. So we've got a much darker green. See how much darker that is? So that I want to drop in quickly now so that where it's coming out from under the fish and up on the right hand side and where it goes under that lily pad, it's darker, see? So wherever this stalk is coming out from under the fish, just have a shadow there. And then continue with that shadow all down. Now this is dried out already, you see. All down on the right hand side. I'll show you how to soften that now anyway. You've got to work quickly with watercolour so that it doesn't dry too hard. And again, where that stalk is going off, off the page let's have a bit more of a shadow there now to moisten that green that pale green line that i've done let me show you i take a brush a round brush and i flick it it's got a i moistened it and i flicked it and now it's got a bit of moisture in those hairs just a bit if i drag it carefully down that fine green line and dissolve the edge of that line a little bit we got uh, a better sort of idea of shadow on the right and dark on the left and again to, to emphasize that go back in for the strong green with the alizarin crimson and the sap green there and do it one more time very quickly before it dries hard again and you can see we're creating the idea of light now on these stalks okay so where it comes out from under the fish really dark and then as it tapers away lose some of that darkness and if I zoom out you can see can't you it sort of looks darker there and then lighter there and you can also really enhance that by using a flat brush that you've moistened and dried in a cloth so you've got a sharp edge now and then you can lift out wipe away some of that paint rinse your brush wipe it let's lift out some a highlight on that little stalk there so you can you can creating a bit of light in the painting instead of having it all the same all the same strength okay so now let's get on with some more stalks i'm just going to carry on with this these ones over here I'll work on two at a time I think and then I can be uh, changing the light and dark on them as time goes on. Let's get a few of these in. This is just a pale middle green, a bit of sap green and a little bit of um, hooker's green in there as well. Now let's go for my strong green now which is the hooker's green and a bit of alizarin to make that quite dark because you want to put the shadow side on the stalks and the shadow would be there where it's coming out from under the fish taper it away and then darker where it's going off the painting And then I'll, I've got a moist brush which I flicked and I'll just blend that in a little bit more gradually. See, I'll use this brush as well. 
put some of this darker green right where that stalk comes under the fish and a bit of dark there and last of all some dark up on this bit of the stalk again where that stalk goes under the fish let's put a little bit of dark dark kick under there and then also on the far right hand edge of that stalk so we're doing a nice bit of a subtle blending and this is how the stalks are looking now as they're coming out from under the fish all the time we want to create the idea of darkness under the fish where the stalks coming out and then a bit paler as it as it comes into the light a little bit so this is all i'm doing i'm using the pale green for the stalk body in general and then i'm enhancing the dark and the light on each one for those of you who've just joined me welcome i hope you enjoy this demo it'll be available to you uh, at the end as a recording and in the description if you want you can get for just a few pounds or dollars the actual five page printout lesson and in there are full colour photos of every step that I'm doing and the outline all right so if you click that link you'll go to my Etsy shop and you can download instantly download that pdf now and if you have any you know questions or anything you can email me at my email address which is in the pdf right so now we're getting there let's put a little bit more of the dark again on this stalk here let that bleed and just have darkness on one side i'm just going for that side there a little bit of dark there i don't want to put um the green on when it's too wet because it'll 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 bleed too far okay but you'll notice that these stalks are so thin that they sort of they dry a little bit too quickly so where they've dried and i've got a hard edge i'm going to take my slightly moist brush and just coax that darkness down a little bit take some of that out blend some of that in so it's all fine tuning okay so if you can you can see them a bit better now there's a bit more dark there a bit dark under that lily pad so you get the idea okay let's zoom out a bit right I, my fish now is still a little bit cool as i touch it that's still too damp to paint into because if i paint into it i'll probably get some back ones so i'm gonna just finish off the lily pad here underneath the bigger one actually i'm gonna add a little bit of turquoise into that to make it a bit cooler because it's underneath the big one okay and because it's underneath the big one i want to do less detail in it as well so i'm not going to make as much of a fuss of it as i did with the bigger one so i'll just have a plain turquoise color And we will want a cast shadow on there now because this lily pad is above that one so for a cast shadow in that uh, opposite turquoise on the color wheel is cadmium uh, red 
so I'm going to put a bit of cadmium red into that plus plus there was a bit of green in there so I'll put a, put a darker shadow coming out over that leaf there just a little bit of a shadow <coughs> Actually, I might drop a little bit of darker green right in there just to push it out a bit more. <coughs> okay, let's see if anybody has uh, chatted. Okay, all right, it's okay. Right, there's a last tiny little stem to do now. Leave it at the top. stem there and I'll put a little bit of this turquoisey green in that just to echo the green in that um, lily pad and I, I've got a brush here that I flicked and it's moist and I'm just going to soften out that shadow a bit more just make it a bit hard right so that's how it's looking at the moment what I'm going to do now is give it a quick hair dry so that I can just um, start work on the fish a bit more. So bear with me a second, I'll just dry it. Okay, so I'm going to start strengthening this fish up now. So let's have a look. Right, ready to go. Okay, so if I touch it now, it's dry now. Okay, so what I want to show you is that you can actually re wet uh, an image and drop more colour into it. So let's do that now. What you need is a nice big soft mop brush so that you don't disturb the wash that's underneath. So I've got this size, um, this is a size 12 round brush. And I'm just going to be gliding water on. Let me just get it that way around so you can see. I'm going to be gliding that water on so that I can just uh, add some more colour to it. Needed a little bit of extra cadmium scarlet because I just ran out of that a little bit. So let me just uh, squirt some of that into my palette. This is a Frank Webb palette, Frank Webb, and you can get these palettes from Cheap Joe's uh, on the web. They, they're from America. You can't get them in the UK, unfortunately, um, but I've had my palette about 25 years. So it's well worth well worth uh, the, the purchase price okay so I'm going to use just clear water now in this brush and I'm going to be ready to uh, drop in some stronger red paint so let's just show you that you can moisten this very gently very lightly just be as gentle as you can and it shouldn't disturb the wash underneath too much but it will give us chance to drop in another layer of paint and get that lovely scarlet patchy look of the koi. Right, can you see, I need to do it again. It's not enough. It's soaked in because this paper is so absorbent. It's 100% cotton rag and it absorbs 
a lot of water. Right now, can you see that moisture there now? I could do a little bit more. A little bit more. Right, so I'm going straight in with my flat brush now. I'm going to pick up some of this gorgeous uh, cadmium scarlet. It's a really bright, vibrant colour. And I'm going to go on top of some of the earlier markings. That I that I made. So we've got layers of red, you know, and different strengths of re different strengths of red coming on now. <clears throat> and once again, I'm going to tip my board. You can tip it either way. You can see the moisture in there. And I'm going to be brave now and take my squirty brush, and it's at a slight angle, and I'm just going to. Screw it a little bit and see this run happening here now. I want that run to happen. Yes, yeah, happening a bit there now. That's lovely. So we're just getting the natural watercolour effect and tip it back the other way and let it bleed down that way as well. So we get this lovely watercolour effect, you know, and oh, I think this is what most people most people love about watercolour is this effect, this runny look that you can get. So just let the watercolour have its head and then when you lay it flat, it won't bleed anymore. All right, I'm not worried about that bleed by the tail because the water will be covering that in a minute so that's where we are with this lovely soft fish we've got this runny watercolor effect which i want and then what we'll do is we'll put some harder details on hiya andrea nice to see you uh yeah it's afternoon here in wales thanks for joining us from calgary andrea hope you've enjoyed this fish I'm going to crack on with it, okay? If you um, want, you know, you can watch this video again because it will be ready for uh, viewing once I finish the session. So while this fish is still a bit moist, I'm going to get a bit of dry tissue and once again, reclaim some hot bits of white. You know, press in, press in the pa uh, paper and get those sharp, you know edges of white here and there which will contrast strongly with the the reds and it hasn't got to be you know any particular shape the fish they come in all sorts of uh, patterns don't they so you can do what you like with it there so that's how it's looking at the moment all right so again, I can't do any more work on the fish while it's still got a bit of moisture in its body. If you can see, there's a slight shine on the body there. That means it's still moist. So I'm, I'm not going to do any more to it. So again, I'm just going to hair dry it and then I'm going to get on with putting some water in the background. So bear with me again while I just go to the hair dryer. Okay, as a rule, I don't recommend hair drying watercolour under any circumstances. 
but because I'm doing this live tutorial I've got to really otherwise it would take too long uh, when you dry it with a hairdryer of course it dulls the color a little bit so don't don't do it if you don't have to I'm only doing it because I'm showing you and I want to get things you know going along at a bit of a pace okay right so let's go now and start work on the on the background I'll do some work on the background and then I'll come back to the fish because he'll have had a little bit more time again to actually dry out so I'm going in for a pot of clear water now and I'm going to wet all around oh that's a little bit dirty isn't it <laughs> okay let's clear that off I still had some muck left in my brush there okay so I'm going to clearly uh, paint in this area which is bounded by the stalk there and the fish itself and I'm wetting it first because then when I drop my colour in I'll have a nice soft blur and I won't have to rush because if I were to paint a soupy wash onto dry paper every brush stroke would give me a hard edge which I don't want okay so luckily we've got all these stalks which can help us with the uh, wetting of the fish background okay and if you if you're new to this video hi Renee nice to see you if you're still there as well if you want to get the five page step-by-step -step tutorial for this fish and the outline then it's just a few dollars and it's in the description of the video if you want to click that link and get all the details so you can enjoy doing this yourself at a later date you can always replay this video and I'm an email away if you need any help okay so I don't know if I'm gonna risk something a bit mad now I I in my previous one I did a blue um, I did blue for the water but today I just want to do something different I want to use the red don't ask me why it's just calling to me I might be really sorry I do but I just feel like using a very pale red in the water today so let's get it in there and see what how I feel about it I just love this cadmium red it's a beautiful poppy red it's a cold red um, but it, it gives you lovely hints and tints of like a coral salmon color it's very delicate it's it's very oriental to me that's that's what it is it's an oriental color so I'm again you can see we're getting soft uh, strokes because I, 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 I wetted the whole area before I dropped this color in cutting around the eye yeah. right and what I'd like to do now is just get a piece of dry tissue and maybe um, dab out some paint here and there for a little bit of you know movement in the in the water there so again let's do a bit more work I'll cut cut round this section now wetting it so that I can then drop in a nice pale blurry bit of pink using this cadmium scarlet by the way the colors I'm using are Windsor and Newton professional artist quality they, they really are very different to the Copman 
student range that Windsor and Newton all, also make. And um, if you if you haven't tried artist quality yet, because you're waiting until you get good, or because you think you're a student and you don't deserve to have them yet, think again. Because even if you only bought one tube, you know, every month or something, and started getting used to seeing what watercolour is really like, then you will see how your student colours are really not watercolour at all. They got a lot more filler in them and they don't react in the same way on the paper and in the water and they're not as vibrant and they don't last, they're not as light fast. So like with everything there's a reason why they're a bit more expensive but I'd really don't hold back too long in fact just just get one start getting one tube a month you know get a blue get a red get a yellow so that you can mix the secondary colors from the primary colors and you'll soon see a difference in your work believe me i've been teaching students for 20 uh, for 25 years i've been painting for 25 years and i know students are usually quite disappointed when they're not getting the same results as what I would get in my tutorials and the main reason is that they're using um, cheaper paints and they don't help you okay so start building this up now <laughs> I'm glad you're liking this uh, Andrea this, this koi carp is one of my favourite things to paint because it, it's the contrast of the red and the white on the paper and uh, all the lovely, the way that the paint flows, you know. I just really, really like that. And today I wanted to keep it lighter and fresher, more spring-like. Instead of having the dark blue water, I wanted to have this pale oriental pinky water and just see how it flows and you can see if I zoom in a bit where I lifted out those pink patches we got slightly hard edge there which is does, I think it looks quite nice I'm happy with that so you know just try try some different things I'm going to be painting right up to that green stalk, okay, so that I try and avoid having any little white lines along the edge of things so that things don't look too cut out. Let's press uh, press in again and maybe have a little bit of white there and a bit of white there. So that's how it's looking now. I don't quite like it, quite like it. Okay, let's carry on with the wetting now. Let's see. Hi Al, Alison, Alison Allen. I've just spotted your, I just spotted your, your message. Lovely to see you. How are things? How are you and John? All right. So you you got um so you're sixteen degrees there, are you Andrea? Well, I don't know what we are in Wales, but um I'm in I'm inside, so I don't really mind. <laughs> so I'm going to carry on painting this now. So Al, do you feel like taking up watercolour now then? Now that you've got time, are you at ho are you still working? I hope you're not, because I know you were nursing. I hope you're safe anyway. I hope everybody's safe where they are with this coronavirus. But I'm not going to talk about that now because I think we all want to break from it. That's why I'm doing these live tutorials as a complete break from reality. Right, so I'm liking my... Thanks, Renee. That's really kind. I'm glad you are enjoying this koi. I hope that if you do decide to buy the, the downloadable printable that's in my link, that you can do it, you know, quietly at home, you know, in the next few days or something, because the video 
will be here for you, okay? And you can rewind it and play it as often as you like. Uh, thanks for the compliment about my voice, that's really lovely. <laughs> right, a bit of pink in there. So as you can see, I'm sort of changing the pink from light to dark, keeping it a bit, a bit um, variegated. Hopefully that'll... Um, thanks, Renee. Glad you agree. Right. And of course, with Koi, you know, whoever goes to paint this now, you can paint a different pattern on his back. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. You could introduce different colours because we can have Koi with some black patches on them. They can be, you know, red, black, orange, and maybe why not even some sort of like cerise pink or something. I think I've seen some cerise pink. Alison Allen, how are you over in Williamsburg? Have I got the wrong Alison Allen? I'm thinking of my friend Alison Allen that I went to school with. Have I got the wrong Alison Allen? If I have Alison Allen in Williamsburg, I apologise, but I'm glad you're enjoying this painting. <laughs> yeah, so as I was saying, you can really let rip with your creativity and paint this koi using this basic outline that you can get in the PDF and paint it any colour you like. I think what I'm going to do now is move into more of um, an orangey colour. Let's have some of this here. This is a bit of... Um, what did I put in that? A bit of aureolin. Yes. A bit of aureolin with a bit of cadmium scarlet i'm using 100 percent arsh you you use arsh don't you andrea it's uh, spelled a r c h e s i know you know but i'm saying it for the others it's french paper some people pronounce it arches but it's actually french so it's arsh and it's 90 pounds or 200 gsm in weight and um it's cotton rag you know it's cotton this is gorgeous I'm going to drop a bit of bright yellow in there. I just fancy a bit of a bit of warm, a bit of warm yellow. Let's maybe wipe some of that out, and maybe just drop a little bit in there. Ah, so Alison Allen, you you're a second Alison Allen. So I know two Alison Allens now. Well, nice to meet you, Alison. Where where are you on your watercolor journey? Would you say are you a beginner, or are you have you been painting for a while? What's your story? Right, I'm going to see this yellow I've just put in there. I think that gives it a nice bit of warmth, doesn't it? So let's put a bit more of that yellow under these lily pads. And we'll get a bit of a warmth going here. I'm just wetting that area. I haven't got many areas left to do now. So we're starting to you know, build a bit of depth into the painting. Oh, I did forget to use my tissue. I'm going to just press in and lift out a bit of colour just for, you know, variety. Gosh, been painting for 30 years, Alison. That's a lot long. That's five years longer than me. Are you self-taught as well or did you go to college? That's a long time, isn't it? 30 years. A, a long time to be enjoying this lovely medium. And we're never going to be completely finished with it, are we? Because it's it's so demanding. Also, you've, you've both. So you've had a little bit of tuition as well as some of your own um, teaching yourself then, Alison, yeah? That's, that's the same as me. I, in fact, I, I'm self-taught, but I just had six months at the beginning in a group it was quite informal and then for my 50th birthday i paid to go on a 10-week 
a master's course in classical drawing and painting here in Wales at the Welsh Academy of Art and that really gave me new eyes. It really showed me how to see. It was a fantastic course. Uh, it was, it, we weren't allowed to do any painting, we were just working in charcoal, doing cast studies and lights and darks. So it was really good, you know, it was really ha quite hardcore, uh, but I learned a lot from that. Right, last little chink now. I'm going to paint this in without wetting it because it's so small. I can get away with that there. <laughs> yeah, it was great, uh, Alison. Of course, I went up one day a week for 10 weeks and I studied with Lucy, who had studied in one of the oldest working atelier in Florence, dating from like the 1600s. So she had classical training and then she, she was British and then she set up her own academy in Wales. So I was really lucky to be with Lucy. A bit more of a corner in there. <clears throat> And I think I'm going to call that background finished now. So we've got a little bit of warmth coming through the sort of water. Oksana Davis. Now she sounds like she's probably of Russian heritage. Yeah, a lot of good Russian, a lot of good painters coming out of Russia. Aren't they? They're really fantastic skills. They, they have quite classical training, I think, still in Russian art schools. Whereas in Britain, we haven't had classical training uh, for many decades, but it's, it's coming back now into vogue, I think. Right, okay, I thought you would be, Alison. Right, well, what I'm going to do now is, I've got my background in. I feel now like I really want to bring the fish a little bit more forward, so I'm going to start putting in some much stronger darks. So let's wipe this palette down now, because it's getting a bit messy, and I'm running out of mixing space. So... I know I'm going to waste a bit of paint there, but that's life. I can't, I can't work in a, 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 a dirty palette. It's very hard to focus on the colours. <clears throat> ah, she holds your feet to the fire. Yes, that's that's a good way of putting it. Well, nothing good is, is easy, is it? You know, anything you, anything that requires a bit of uh, skill, is a bit of sacrifice, isn't there? I think. Okay. So uh, what I would say is, if I wasn't online now, I would be going to change my water. Because that to me is quite dirty. But I haven't got time to go and change my water now, so I'll just have to manage. Um, right, we're going to start strength strengthening this fish up now and adding some more shadows to it. So if you if you did want to get the instant PDF download, the link is in my description to this video and the PDF is on my Etsy shop. So it's already there for you if you fancy getting that. Right, this fish now then, I want to go for a stronger shadow on the left hand side because right now the fish looks flat. So going back to my shadow colour, I'm going to mix it with Cadmium Scarlet uh, and some Cerulean Blue. Bear with me a sec. We've got some Cerulean Blue here. It's Windsor and Newton. Uh, brand. And these two, if I can show you on the colour wheel, our opposites right so cadmium blue uh, ca cerulean blue is a sort of it's a blue in between this blue and that blue and um, they sort of work quite well with sort of the orangey reds these ones do so, so they're sort of opposite complementary so let's have a look so cadmium scarlet there and then let's pick a speck of uh, cerulean blue and if I can zoom in, I want to show you how I get this shadow colour. <clears throat> so rather than reaching for a tube of neutral tint or black and trying to get a shadow like that, I'd prefer to mix it, 
mix my grey using cadmium scarlet which is evident in the fish's patches and um, it's it's opposite it's complement so I'm going to put that on now zoom out so this dark is going to go all the way And then I'm going to bring a moist brush. This is a brush that I've moistened and I've flicked. And then soften the hard edge of that grey to blend it seamlessly away into the fish, see? So let's go back in with a little bit more shadow. Drop that shadow really dark right down there on the left hand side of the fish. And then it'll bleed up into that moistened area that I painted in there. Um, I'm going to just add some of these markings and ridges on the actual fin. Using this shadow as well. And taper it around the the mouth there and the sort of the, those little features on the mouth so we've got a bit more depth yeah a bit more depth in the shot in the shadow now yes yeah, a good idea Alison to have a couple more pots of water um, I've just found that trying to set up to do live streaming in my studio with all my stuff on my desk and my computer there's not a lot of room <laughs> left for anything but I totally agree it's, it's better to have much more um, you know sort of water so that you can not have to stop and always have fresh water when you're rinsing your brushes or adding drops of water for mixing new colours in. Okay, I'm going to go stronger, a bit stronger again on that shadow colour. in the curve of his tail there and then along the ridge of his the spine of his back there and then I'm going to do a bit of work in the eye and there's the gill there and this eye Zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> okay, Debbie, thanks for watching so far. And thanks for your kind words. That's really lovely. Lovely to see you. I'll, I'll give people more notice next time when I'm going to do one of these, okay? Take care, Debbie. Right. So finally now, I use a tiny little brush and go into the eye and get a little bit more detail in there. So I'll just pick up a little bit of uh, cerulean blue. This is quite neat now. Bit of cerulean blue and a bit of that cadmium uh, scarlet. It'll give me a nice grey. It won't be too hard, you know. And do a little bit more of um, darkness in the eye there. Sort of an elliptical shape. and in the other one let's get those eyes in there a little bit better and then I think I'll just drag the brush a bit of sort of dry brush on those very fine uh, ridges in the fish's fins then let me just drag those out
Okay, let's see. And I'll just do a few more details here. I'm taking tapering out with some details there. I'm just defining the mouth a little bit with this soft grey. Right, and I think I'm going to call that finished. Okay, so let's just peel. I like to peel the uh, masking tape away. I've just got washi tape here. And it's just a, a nice crisp edge around my painting. And there we are. Okay, so I, I hope you've enjoyed watching this simple demonstration of a fish. If you do want the PDF, it's in the link uh, in the description of this video and you can download it there and that also keeps me in uh, tea and cake and I'll be doing another demonstration shortly. Thanks for everybody for your comments and um, thanks for helping me out at the beginning when I was trying to do the sound check and everything. Okay, I'm Alison Fennell, the Pottery and Artist and if you want to visit my website, it's the Pottery and Artist dot co dot uk and on there you'll find free videos as well as paying courses and my magazine which is out uh, actually tomorrow it's called the, um, the Pottery and Artist magazine and I write it for artists about artists so again thanks for watching bye for now bye Andrea thanks for watching thanks Alison glad you liked it I hope to be uh, a bit better next time. <laughs>